Welcome to Meow Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore, and happy St. Patrick's Day. I don't know, not that bad joke. Here with me again is one of my feline co-hosts, Pet Safety Cat Casey, and the other one, Rusty the Performer, will pop in during the show. I also want at this time, and speaking of that, he's wearing a red and green tie in honor of St. Patrick's Day. I also, uh, it is with great honor, we have an amazing veterinarian in the house. Well, actually, he's in his L.A. house, and we're all over the place. Please join me in giving pause and applause, applause to the one, the only, Dr. Jeff Werber. Welcome to Meow Yow. Well, thanks for having me. This is so much fun. All I'm right. All pre prepped. I have my green, <laughs> right? Uh, yep, I, we're in the all office green. Today. In the hospital, um, everybody was wearing something green. Um, I have, I have, a, I, I have my green drink ready to go. One of my faves. I have my green eyes, so I wear those every day. Oh, I, that's nice. I, that's I, nice. I have, to, I have to thank my parents <laughs> for that one. So uh, I'm always prepared. Hey guys, this show is brought to you each and every week by the Cat Fancier Association, and we want to give a big uh, thank you to our sponsors today: Pet King Brand, the makers of Zymox and Oratine, and also In Clover. They make some pretty darn good uh, cat and dog supplements. And joining us, as always, are my co-pilots for the show: All Breed CFA Judge Kathy Black. Woo! And all breed CFA judge and editor of Cat Talk, Teresa Kiger. Yay! Did you bring Phoebe? She's right here. She's been. Oh, uh, Dr. Oh, Jeff, there's a lot of four leggers that have a sayer in this show. Oh, and see. if any of yours want to come in, that would be awesome, too. Um, is your dog Destiny around, Kathy? She's got a dog smaller than most cats. <laughs> Destiny's been real tired today. I think she played too much. She's been sleeping. Oh, she's been drinking a little too much. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she's been drinking too much, but she, she's been running through the yard. She enjoys this weather. So you're well, going to let in honor, sleeping dogs lie. Yeah, yeah, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, you're going to get filled with really bad puns and jokes from me and probably from these guys too. So are we ready to sham rock and roll? Absolutely. Is that a good one? Come That's on, come one. on. I've never heard that before. All right. And do you know what a leprechaun uh, keeps outside his house? <laughs> Patio furniture. Come on, come on. Last bad one. How do you tell if a potato is, is not from Ireland? It's eyes aren't smiling. <laughs> That's a good guy. When it's a French fry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. So in honor of St. Patrick's Day and the fact that we have this amazing veterinarian, we wanted to salute some specific cat breeds that actually are known for some green eyes of different hues. Now, Caster Magazine uh, did an article on it and they ran down a few of them, but we got the brain trust here with Kathy, Teresa and Dr. Jeff. So I got the listing of Abyssinians Egyptian Mouse, who's going to be our profile today with Kathy, Havana Brown, Norwegian Forest Cat, Russian Blue, Sphinx, Turkish Angora, Kathy, Dr. Jeff, or Teresa, who else? What other kitties have well, green eyes? I'll tell you, I have uh, my, my current, current crew of six yeah. um, are, are interestingly all uh, rescues, so they are all what, kitty mutts, yep. but but I can say a three of my one, my one all black. His name is Ninja, Black Ninja. Ninja, good name. And I have two tabbies, and all of them have green eyes to match their and, daddy. <laughs> yep, and 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 I tell you, they're they're piercing, especially Ninja, the black one. Maybe the contrast against his black oh. head and face. Uh, he's he's a stunning, stunning green eyes, and such a sweet cat. Such a that sweet sounds cat. cool, Kathy. Well, what's another couple, three? A, a couple of weeks ago, we had the blue breeds. Remember, we talked about the four breeds that yeah. only come in blue. Well, we had the British, but anyway. And one of the ones that always has green eyes that we talked about was the Karat breed. Oh, so okay. Bring up the Karat breed that was not on your list. Uh, and Teresa, you mentioned oh, the, uh, the biggies, the Orientals. Yes, all the or Orientals have green eyes except for whites or and whites. Right. Wow. 
Now we have Dr. Jeff in the house and he's from LA and you do, you've been a veterinarian for a number of years and you've had, you have celebrities that bring their cats and dogs to you, right? Have you had any that you want to, um, I don't want to say hiss and tell, but is there any, a couple of cool cats that belong to a couple of cool celebs? Uh, you can name um, a lot of them are, uh, have dogs. I see a lot of their dogs. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I got to tell you, it's so interesting working with the celebs is that, you know, whatever um, image you have in your mind about them, yeah. uh, when you see them with their pets, that image is squashed. Right? <laughs> they are literally so in tune to their pets. So That's nice. Oh, no, they, they care so much about them. They love them. They, they, you know, with this, you know, we let people in the office, you know, a lot of hospitals now that are not using telemedicine mm -hmm. or if they're using it, they're not using it properly. And you're sitting in a car wondering what's going on. I was talking to a woman this morning on, on my app, my platform at AirVet, and she was telling me about her recent experience at a vet hospital. And um, then she couldn't even be in San And I said, do you have any kids? She goes, yes, I have a newborn and I have a four-year-old. And I said, oh, can you imagine going to the doctor with your newborn oh. and the nurse come out saying, oh, I'm sorry, mom, but you have to stay out in the waiting room in your car while we no. take the baby. I mean, really? That's how I felt when I, I took a brand new, you know, young animal and they said, nope, you don't get to go in with it. And I'm like, what? It's his first visit, you know? And right. so... Yeah, so, uh, we're going to anyway, talk so a little bit more. Are... Yeah, we're going to talk about AirVet. This is a, a telemedicine program that Dr. Yeah. Jeff is heading. There's Destiny. There's our dog we allow into the <laughs> Meowy Hour. Is uh, that a cutie pie? Um, let me get to, uh, if I may, uh, do we have any CFA news or are we going to go ahead? So I got to yeah. stick to the, the script. Take it away, Kathy. Okay, so the, the CFA. <laughs> News announcement. Let me get everything going here. Uh, <laughs> is, is we have a we have a kitty coalition coming up, and um, why can I not get my my right screen to share? Oh, here, hang on, hang on. Okay, so there's a class called Basic Critical Care for Kittens, and it's a webinar workshop on March the 25th. So that is a week from tomorrow. And it's from six o'clock at night until 7.30 Eastern. I think that means daylight time. And uh, the Susan Spalding is the speaker. So uh, to, Teresa, you'll have to tell me, how do they enroll? Where do they go? Well, this, um, uh, look on the CFA web, um, uh, CFA Facebook page, which is um, Facebook CFA Cats. And there will be links to that graphics there. It's also on our Instagram site and uh, will be a CFA story. Okay. Well, we should get her on the show sometime. We should. Yeah. All right. That's easy. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. We have prizes here, Dr. Jeff. So I know you know probably these answers. So yeah. <laughs> because we announce them next week. Okay. Um, we give away prizes from our sponsors, Zymox and Oritane, and also in Clover. So last week's trivia question was this. Um, name the cat-loving, well, you might know this. You can answer this one. Name the cat-loving celebrity who loves her two Scottish folds named Meredith and Olivia Benson. Initials T.S. I have no. Singer. Very tall blonde. <laughs> Taylor we Swift. Had, oh, Taylor we, Swift. Had, we had nine people give the correct answer last week. Wow. So please, Kathy, tell us who the winners are. So David Fry was the winner of the Zymox or team package. Okay. And Can Anthony, you know yeah, Anthony Gonzalez was the winner of the N Clover Wellness. Can treat. we go ahead and show those products if you don't mind? Yes, we can. This is what the goodies are. And this is what are up for grabs for this week. Okay, so first of all, with the Zymox, you get a package of four different things. You get the shampoo, you get the leave-in conditioner, which I have to say the leave-in conditioner for my lovely little toodle is, <laughs> that's the most wonderful product in right. the world. I love that stuff. I rinse it out a little bit, but it just keeps her hair from nodding. Uh, eye cleaner and, I'm sorry, ear cleaner and toothpaste. 
Right. So this gift That's a pretty good lineup. Of, you know, you know, you know Zymax and our team, right, Dr. Jeff? They've been oh, around a long time and they've got I, a lot uh, of veterinary. I have to tell you, just to give a little plug for these companies. So I, again, on telemedicine, we are somewhat limited with what we can prescribe. And if we don't have what's called a VCPR, we can't prescribe. It's a veterinary client-patient relationship. And I send so many people to one of the online pharmacies, because you don't need a prescription to get Zymox. I said, it's a fantastic ear cleaner and it's yeah. an ear medication. You can get Zymox HC, you can get it over the counter. You don't need a prescription. And um, I love Zymox and nice. uh, Orkian as well. So they're, you know, take it from me, take it from a vet who does a lot of prescribing. Great. Okay. Product. Hey, before we switch over, but uh, on Zymox, guys, anybody who goes to Zymox.com and puts in Arden and the number one zero, Arden 10, you're going to get 10% off at checkout. So there you go. I don't have much clout, Dr. Jeff, but 10%. There you go. Hey, better than keeping other, the pants. That's right. Our other sponsor, and this is Rusty's Tail right here. Our other sponsor is In Clover. They make a whole lineup of... Uh, uh, pet, uh, supplements for dogs and for cats and this is the packet that you're going to get for the cats and um, we had Rebecca Rose on our show she's a biochemist and the founder of in clover so that's a nice little packet so Rusty says while you guys are checking that screen I'm going to have come here, Rusty, come here. I'm going to have one of the uh, sleek just in case I want to keep my coat looking beautiful thank you so much do you, would you like one, Dr. Jeff? Sure, please. <laughs> Here's my cats. So um, these are pretty nice prizes that we offer. Yeah. Um, let me give you the trivia question. Now, this one where you have to be mum's the word, Dr. Jeff. Okay. Although there are many, there are dog breeds that hail from Ireland. Again, you notice my, I am part Irish. See my shirt. Um, there's the Glen of Imal, who's, you know, Irish breed. There's the, the Irish setter. The Irish Wolfhound. The Irish Wolfhound. Anybody else got another one? Any other Irish dogs? There That's the only are ones I know. Um... Somebody cheat. Go ahead. <laughs> but in doing research, and we've got two old breed judges right here that would know, there is not a cat breed that is specifically from Ireland. Is that correct? Yep. Not Do you that know I know what is you know what is from Ireland that all the rest of us now have that is the the country is native to this species? The common lizard. So the guy was getting the snakes out of Ireland. I guess he got the lizards out too. <laughs> Thank you, Ireland. Um, yeah. But here's the deal. Here's the question. There's no direct cat breed originating from that Emerald Isle. However, which one of these following cat breeds is believed to have originated in the nearby Isle of Man. Okay, here's your choices. Don't say it, Dr. Jeff. A, Abyssinian. B, Devon Rex. Don't, don't show your poker face. C, Manx. Or D, Aussie Cat. We're going to name the, the answer next week. But the winners are going to be two. One's going to get the Zymax Oratine and the other's going to get the In Clover. That's pretty cool. And maybe Dr. Jeff will throw in a new car, right, Dr. Yeah, Jeff? Right. <laughs> a little bitty car. Yeah, a little bitty nice. car, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was trying to get some uh, 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 things for St. Patrick's Day. I've got catnip toys, little booties, and a little shamrock hat um, for Rusty, um, but not much. So better. in case we have some new uh, people watching, you type your answer into the yeah. Facebook chat on the video, and you have until Sunday afternoon to watch this video and type your answer. So mm -hmm. type type the correct response to which breed originated from the Isle of Man in the chat of the Facebook live video. All right. This is the, the heart of the show when we get to have a nice chat with Dr. Jeff Werber. Guys, he's got the easiest uh, website drjeff.com. Dude, did you get this when they just had the internet? I mean, really? No, I have to tell you, I mean, I've had it for a long time. And <laughs> I was, I was, you know, coming up with my domain. And I just said, I just did a search, drjeff.com. I'm thinking, oh my God, there, there's so many Dr. Jeffs. There's the mountain vet, Dr. Jeff. There's doctor, there are a number of dentists, Dr. Jeff. And I thought, I mean, I'm sure that anyway, I'm telling you, it was available. 
And I, I, I took it and I've, uh, my, 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 I just said on my email, I go, so here's my email. I said, you might want to write it down because it's really long. It's really hard. It's drjff. And I go, okay, now here's the hard part at drjff.com. <laughs> and they start laughing. It's drjeff at drjeff.com. So yeah, I'm well, uh, pretty lucky. This guy has been saving the lives of animals and bringing them great lives for many decades. We're going to show um, a slideshow that he sent us some pictures. Guys, you've got to check out and follow him on Instagram. Okay, what's your Instagram? It's just at Dr. Jeff Werber, D-R-J-F-F Werber, very easy, because that's my name. So. Yeah, at Dr. Jeff Werber, guys. Check out, because you know what? I got to tell you a little secret, Dr. Jeff. We've been friends for about 20 years, and every morning... I check out your Instagram page and guys take a gander. I it's better than a cup of coffee. Look at the smile. And tell me who's this one? Who do you got here? Do you see this one, Dr. So, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. This is just one of my patients. I, you know, I am a cat nut as well as a dog nut. And um, I don't think that there's I mean, how much fun do I have every day just picking up these cats? And and I don't know, you know, it's funny. I used to think, and I still may be true, I don't know, the, the jury's out. Um, whether I have the magic touch with cats because I will be sitting with the client holding the cat in my arms. I'm writing and all of a sudden, and if this has happened dozens upon dozens of times, they go, I can't believe it. I go, what? She goes, I've never been able to hold my cat this long. Wow. And I'm sitting there for 10 minutes. So when I was telling to one of the beha cat behaviors, they said, don't be so hot on your, on your high on your horse, Werber. It's because <laughs> when, you're, when, it, when a cat is in a, in a strange environment like that, and they don't know any place to hide because they're not familiar with the location, right? So they're just going to like freeze. Oh. <laughs> and, but I will, having said that, I've also tried to pick up some cats that don't want to be picked up. They don't freeze. They <laughs> no, have very no, long no. nails. They know to go after the face and the eyes. Yeah. So, uh, so it's not so good. But well, you look good. You don't look scarred up. Who's this cutie pie? It's just, these are all just patients of mine that I just, you know, I, I, I pick them up and uh, they get their hugs. And I, as they're purring away, I said, All right, I gotta get, you got to get me a picture. And people love to see their, their cats on, uh, oh, now this, this one I took home. Okay. So, <laughs> All right, tell us the story. What's the 411 on this cutie pie? I love well, just, the little just, you know, I've always wanted an orange tabby, okay? And this cat came in, it was a rescue. And I just, I said, oh my God. I said, this is what I've always wanted, a cat like this. And I, I just said to the rescue, I said, I'm taking him. No What's question. the kitty's name? So this is Jazz. Jazz. How old is Jazz now? Jazz about seven months now. And uh, I call the first year of a kitten's life the wonder year because you wonder where your sanity is going. How are you doing with Jazz, Dr. Jeff? Oh, great. And, and, and the, the real good part is about all my cats and my dogs, I have five dogs, is, mm -hmm. that, is that they all seem to get along so well that uh, it's just, you know, I, I can't complain. Wow, that's well, this, amazing. This yeah. little guy, this guy is also, Casey and Rusty were my first uh, ginger boys ever too. So I know what you mean. What do you think about that? I think they do have kind of fun personalities. Oh, I think, think? They, I think they're typically male. They're, yeah. they're typically um, um, friendly and uh, they, they are very social. And uh, in general, and I, you know, I, I'd be really curious to see what you think about this, Arden, but I have found in, in my experience with my cats, and I've had many, many, many cats, and I have many, many cats right now, um, <laughs> is that the males seem to be more social in groups than the females, and yeah. they do much better with my dogs than the females. In our household, we have four male cats and three female dogs, and uh, they all get along. We call them the furry Brady Bunch because I got married, and we, we merged, but uh -huh. we did it carefully um there's always that exception where there's going to be a female cat that is just like the ambassador for the whole house but right. we have uh, kathy here kathy what, what's your take on that in a multi-pet household uh female versus male cats i i found some differences with the different breeds that i worked with i can't say it was something that i would say all the males were this way and all the females were that yeah, way there's no absolute um, my, i always had male cats before i started breeding cats and I always just thought the males were sweeter and 
<laughs> more affectionate, you know. But then now that I'm not breeding, everybody in the house is female. So my girls all get along with each other. The the crazy dog doesn't quite get along with all of them yet. But I mean, he's he, young. She's young. Destiny's he wants young. to get along with them, but they don't want to get along with her. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah, because she's still too much of a puppy. But um, but some of the breeds that I worked with didn't matter if they were male or female. They just were very much a loner type cat they would rather be with a person than another cat i always say there's certain cats that are cat cats and certain cats that are people cats and yeah. and uh so i always had a, some breeds that were could care less about the rest of the cats in the house but then i had other breeds that would just go insane if there was another cat around they had to have another cat with them or they would just be cuckoo um so okay. it's just kind of been, it's been a lot of well, i also think i and maybe you can talk on this one dr jeff the energy that you're giving off and how you move and the fact that you always have the picture that the cat is facing outward. You're not doing a doggy De Niro with the cat face, which is threatening. I, I think you have really good cat karma and you smile all the time. Do you think there's some energy in you? I know you're a veterinarian, you're gonna poke them, but <laughs> that maybe the cat is smelling or sensing? No, what do you uh, think? I think first of all, they are very, very astute when it comes to that. They read us way better than we can read each other. Um, you know, they, they have a sense about people and, and that's how I feel that, you know, and they, they see it. They are, um, when I grab them, I'm holding them, um, I'm hugging them. I'm not, you know, I mean, they, they just feel so warm and comfortable in my grasp. They have no desire to leave. They really yeah. like it and they're purring away. I can't because you have a good soul nervous. and a good heart. They feel it, don't you think? I can't imagine and want to be that close to me if they were afraid. They wouldn't be purring. And these no. cats are all purring. And, and or I'm petting them and you can see that they start taking their neck and you know they just they love it. They're they're so great. I mean people who I say people who tell me that they don't like cats, I said then you haven't met my cats. Because if you met my cats, they, they will I remember when one of my colleagues um uh, I just said about my oriental sushi and sake. Well Sushi loved to be high up. Right. So uh, Dr. Rodney Ale, one of my colleagues, he's a, 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 a veterinary oncologist, both radiation oncologist and medical oncologist. And he's about 6'4". And the wow. first time he came over, all right, he's sitting there and he's talking to me and up behind him, from the floor to the couch, to the back of the couch, to Rodney's shoulder, jumps Sushi <laughs> right on his shoulders because he loved to be high up, Sushi did. And as a person... I was like, what was that? So, <laughs> yeah. He just loves to be up on people's shoulders. So uh, that's how my cats are. We're going to have to bring the NBA over, some players, yeah, and right. see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's, I love your names. So I just want to, I'm just trying to visualize in your home in LA, you, ha you mentioned that you have uh, six cats and five dogs. Am I oh, right? Uh -huh. Okay. What is morning breakfast time like uh, in the uh, well, uh, it starts household? starts for me at about 5 30. Um, I feed the cats first. Of course, because uh, they're gods. They're, yeah, once they're busy, uh, then I start working on the dogs. And then I have to, when they're done, I'm cleaning the cat litters. Uh, that process takes about maybe 45 minutes for, for everything. And then when they're all done with their, their I like, give them canned food to start. Then I'll, I'll just stick a little dry in there so they can forage and graze through the day. Um, but my cats are all good eaters. And I, my, my friend, Ernie Ward, Dr. Ernie Ward would be upset. I with love me. Dr. Ernie Ward. Yeah. yeah. Because two of my cats, they like to eat a little bit too much and I kind of allow them. And yeah. uh, they're, they're, pro they're probably a little heavier than they should be. Yeah. Uh, he's the uh, pet obesity prevention guy, guys. Yes, Dr. Exactly. Ernie Ward. Yeah. I, and, but he <laughs> likes, Ernie likes it actually like skinny, like, like my Orientals do, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, but so he's, he's on the other extreme. You know, we, we do what's called the BCS, a body conditioning score right. on a scale from one to nine out of nine. Okay. So five is dead center. So five is where you want to be. So two of my cats, one's a seven, one's a six. I can live with it. The seven's a little big. They're uh, not an eight or a nine. Three, That's I good. Three and four. And I said, hey, come on, <laughs> let the cat eat. He's only here for 12, 13, 14 years. Let him, let him have a little fun. Yeah. So, what, what got you into veterinary medicine? Oh, my God. Um, I... Well, according to my parents, I've wanted to be a vet ever since I was five. Really? They, they say I never talk about anything else. I often joke that I was definitely an animal in a prior life. 
I, I have. What, what, what animal do you think you were? Well, I was definitely a, a Rottweiler at one point. Okay. Um, and, uh, but, you know, again, if you read Many Lives, Many Masters, uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, so I uh, brought Dr. Brian Weiss. Uh, there are many options. I, again, I have this knack for cats and dogs where I, they just feel very comfortable in me. They read me well. Maybe it's because that vibe I put out. And, um, but I've wanted to be better since I was little. I, I mean, you know, I see kids nowadays and how much trouble they have the angst, the anxiety of choosing, what am I gonna do? They don't even know when they get to high school. They don't know when they yeah. get to college even. They're halfway through college and still have no idea. And so I, I feel so fortunate that I went through school, both you know, from elementary school to high school, to college, to, to, to med school. I knew exactly what I was gonna do. Well, so, I'm so glad you did because there's a lot of two, three, and four leggers that are very uh, grateful to you. Now there's something called an Emmy. Come on, right. we got to brag a little bit. You are one of our first guests who's been on our show who's won an Emmy. So uh, I, um, I, I accidentally got into media uh, many, many, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, what do I mean by accidentally? I, um, I graduated vet school and I was so amazed my first year out how few people, how few people knew really about their pets as far as the basic health. I mean, right. when a guy comes in at six months of eight with his cat is six months old and ready to start vaccines, I'm saying, start vaccines? Are you joking? <laughs> you know how yeah. lucky you are that, that you know, your cat didn't end up with some major virus? Yeah. So I realized how little they knew. And whose fault was it that the average pet parent knew very little about basics of pet care? I say it's the profession's fault. So um, we, the veterinary profession, has not done a good enough job educating the masses. You see public service announcements on TV about smoking and, and, and self-breast yeah. exam and all these things for men and women, prostate exam, and nothing for pets. When did you see a PSA? Get your vet, your pet into the veterinarian for its booster shots or for its, its starting. Its you only back. see it on uh, the um, Price is Right where they tell you get your, your dog right. or cat exactly. spayed or neutered. Exactly. So uh, I went to the AVMA as a little smart ass little kid. And I said, uh, I said, you know, I live in California. I have a lot of celebrity clients. Um, I, I have you know, clients that are in the, in the industry or our agents. Uh, why don't we, I, I can maybe introduce you guys and maybe we should write some PSAs. I'll see if I can make some connections. And I got this very, if you know, the American Vet Med Association at the time, the, right, exactly. And the average, the average age, the youngest guy there on the board was 70. Give you an idea. So What's his uh, name, Junior? Or kiddo. <laughs> so, so, uh, so they said, oh, sure, Sonny, we got you covered. Now, very condescending. So I waited and waited. Did anything happen? Nothing happened. So I said, you know what? I'm going to write. This is about the beginning. This is the mid-80s. This was when video was getting popular. I'm going to write a video, all right, about pets. Pet basics to pet care. From Good. top to bottom, from puppy kittenhood all the way through. And I had no idea what I'd do with it, but I was going to write it. So... I'm, I pretty much finished with the video. Guy comes into my office with a name I recognized. And, um, and I, I, I said, so um, his name was Randy, Randy Lappin. I said, you're in relation to Al Lappin? He looks to me like, Al's, Al's my dad. I said, oh my God, is that funny? And I told him how my connection to Al was. And uh, I said, oh my God, you got to tell him. I say, hi. I said, what's he doing now? He used to be, he, he owned a little industry, a little company. Uh, uh -huh. You may have heard international industries. Maybe you didn't, but you've heard of International House of Pancakes. Oh, yeah. I have. Oh, yeah. And International House of Pies. Well, that was international industries. So needless wow. to say, Al Lappin was a very comfortable guy. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> I like how you describe him. Comfortable. So, so uh, anyway. <laughs> he never used that quality on me. Right. So I said, what, is, what are you doing now? And what's he doing? He goes, oh, this is great. We produce educational videos. Oh, come on. You I, should have bought a lotto ticket that moment. Is that like <laughs> unbelievable? So I said, oh my God, that's so funny. So I got, long story short, I give him the script. He looks at it, gives shows to his dad and they produce my videos. And the videos got me a segment, a guest segment on a then syndicated talk show called Our Magazine. Uh, the guy loved me on Our Magazine. It was, I, I did it with, with um, uh, well, the, the, the host was Gary Collins and oh, Don yeah. Deluise was the, the, the guest at, you know, that day. So oh, Don my Deluise, goodness. You know, remember Dom Deluise? He oh, used to yeah. you know, very heavy, but very funny about his weight yeah. and would joke all that. So I said, oh my God, you know, the number one nutritional disease affecting dogs is obesity. <laughs> we do a segment on obesity with Dom Deluise. Well, they thought it was hysterical. Oh, I, no. 
<laughs> when, I, when I showed him how much this overweight dog should be eating, he looks and he goes, that's all? And I go, yeah, that's all. He goes, I'm not eating with her. <laughs> so, oh, uh, funny. Anyway, that's, and that's how my, my, my TV career started. From there, I went to home show on ABC and, and Mike and Maddie on ABC. I had my own show on Animal Planet. I had my yeah. own show on, on uh, PBS called Lassie's Pet Vet. And then I became the in-house veterinarian for CBS, uh, KCBS TV in Los Angeles. Yep. And uh, I was on uh, uh, almost every day, three, at least three days a week. And it just so happens that when the Emmys were for the local, the, the, you know, the, the, the regional Emmys, uh, they submitted shows and CBS won. And all the anchor people on CBS got their Emmys. And I got my Emmy for being- So where is your Emmy? Please don't tell me it's in a litter box. No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's <laughs> my, you know, I, I try to, you know, I, I took a picture and, you know, Marty Becker and I are very good friends. And yeah, Marty and I have meow, worked together in the past. And he does, he's you know, one of the guys that probably's done more media than I have. And when I got my Emmy, I called Marty. I took a picture of him. I said, Emmy, uh, I said, Marty, just curious. Where do you keep your Emmy? <laughs> hey, I, had um, to, I had to do a little dig. <laughs> I got to tell you that you follow me everywhere because I go to the Castle Linda Animal Clinic with my pets pre-COVID, of course. And I have a great veterinarian. She's fear free, Dr. Deborah Charles. So I'm going to have to tell her I said her name. Love her. Anyway, when we're in the waiting room, you're Maybe. on camera. What I'm is that? Right. Yep. Yeah. So, Tell everybody that. So, so that is, so we did pet care TV right? and we make educational videos, little snippets. So people waiting in a waiting room, instead of reading a, a you know, a, a time magazine or a people magazine, that's eight weeks old, right? <laughs> it's not news anymore. Why yeah. not get a little education? And, uh, it, it, and it worked, it works very well. People come in and when the doctor's talking about a certain condition that they just saw a little piece on like dentistry, it, it closes the deal. They, they, these animals get their dentals. So, yeah. uh, and uh, I, I get it all the time. People will, you know, see me, I'll, I'll go to a trade show and they'll say, oh my God, we, we saw you at our vet. So. Yeah, yeah. Hey, my dog, Kona, Kona picked up her ears and paid attention. Okay. She's listening to you, Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff, also, we have the other thing in common. I am not a DVM. I don't play it on TV, but we are both hosts of shows with Pet Life Radio. Absolutely. And our mutual buddy, let's do a shout out to Mark Winter, our executive producer. Yours is called Ask the Vets. How long um, have you been doing the show no, on the Pet Life Radio? Years. I'm asking that with Dr. Jeff. And I, we have some guest uh, vets or guest people. Um, in fact, Art, you were on my show. I think, didn't we? You, we, we did a show together. Yeah. And um, so I'm on Sunday mornings at nine o'clock in the West and noon in the East, uh, back in Oklahoma, be 11. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> in Mountain Time. I can uh, tell in, time. <laughs> time would be, would, be, would be 10. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, and we're just there. We do, we do a half hour and it's just anything people want to talk about. I usually start the show with kind of veterinary news. So people can understand what is going on in the veterinary world and the veterinary industry. And then people will come on and, and have your pet with you. And now with telemedicine uh, is what it is and how popular it's becoming, especially amongst millennials, the largest uh, segment of the pet parent population. Well, that's a great growing. segue because tell us for the people that, that don't know what is Air Vets. I know your your son has a role in this too, but right, my it's son is changing the scope of veterinary medicine. So we so I got together with a couple of people that I've worked with in the veterinary world in the past, and we created a a telemedicine platform called Live DVM. We knew exactly mm -hmm. what we wanted, but none of us were in the business tech world to know yeah. how we get this fantastic concept out to the masses to the veterinarians. So um, I'll tell you one thing, um, we probably did one thing right. We hit every single mistake in the book. We got them all. <laughs> so we well, didn't miss good. a one. We all didn't right. miss a one. So uh, Brandon, my son, who's a, a techie guy and a business guy, uh, is, is sort of hearing what we're doing and how many mistakes we're making. And he's trying to teach <laughs> us what to do and why that's not going to work and how we have to do it. And much to, to the, 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 uh, the, the, the objection of many of my other partners, and then Brandon was uh, uh, talking to a, a colleague of his, a friend of his who invested in one of his last companies that was my son was involved in. So he said, Brandon, what are you doing now? He said, I'm helping my dad. He's got this pet telemedicine company. And the guy goes, pet telemedicine? He goes, what, what do you, what's your role? He goes, well, I'm just trying to help him because he's a moron. He doesn't know he's not doing anything right. So, so the guy said, and this is no lie. He says, Brandon, if you were running that company, I would invest right now. Whoa. And this guy 
did a seed round of a lot of money. Brandon became CEO. And we took this company where we, the, the, our, our other, me and the other partners couldn't raise a dime. We just, <laughs> a, we, we just finished a series A. We made about $15 million on our series A. And we are wow. the number one platform on the planet. If you go, I love this one. If you go on to the, the app store and you just put in, because you're a millennial and you know yeah. that there's got to be something like this because I, I have it for me, right? Millennials, yeah. they want to do everything online. Um, and you put in pet telemedicine. We come up number one with over 5,000 five-star reviews. Wow. wow. Our, Did you know about it? this, Kathy? What do you think of this? It's called AirVet, right? AirVet, yep. A-I-R-V-E-T. I and think so it's we, a, we are there. I, I wish I would have thought of it. <laughs> yeah, real time live action. And so now we talk about, so what you can do is when you go log on and, and it's free to join. And so people, pet parents can join. If your vet is on the platform, that's even better. If not, you tell your vet about it because on with air vet, when you're doing curbside, because the lock doesn't let you in, you can actually, your vet, you, you, you put a request for an appointment. Your vet calls you back while he's in the room with your pet. And now you're oh, both perfect. on, he's on his iPad or his phone. You're on your phone in the car, but you are basically in the exam. That's part of awesome. It. You, you, I, you can see the doctor working on your pet. The doctor can see you while you're in the car. When you're talking to each other, you're talking eye to eye, face to face, as you would if, if, if you're, the client was in the exam room as well. And it, it's such a different experience. Oh, you, know what? You, are, you are like a Renaissance man. I mean, in the 80s, when we were on our MTV, you came through with vet videos. Right. Now, right. I'm not going to call you Karen. You and I are boomers. But now you are reaching a whole group, a whole bunch of generations of people. Airbat, and especially during this pandemic, I think Absolutely. this is the way it's going to go. Do you know, Joe, you know so interesting that what, where most people, most pet parents will go. This is yeah. so sad. They will, they will do this before even attempting to call their vet. And really? You know is? Google. Where would they go first? Dr. Google. Exactly. Yeah. That, that is so sad. And, and I tell you from firsthand experience, I've taken close to 3,000 calls in AirVet, just myself. And I will tell you that of the calls that I've taken, how many were true emergencies, right? I truly said, you need to get to your emergency clinic now. Okay, whoa. Maybe, maybe less than 10%, maybe 8%. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the calls, you just need to talk to somebody. You just have some anxiety. You're not sure. You need to be directed in the right place. Make some suggestions of what you could try. And, and that when, when you go on to Google, Google is a sensationalist. Everything is an emergency. Yeah. My dog, my hundred pound, uh, you know, uh, Mastiff ate a Hershey's kiss. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. Hershey's, you gotta, you gotta get to the emergency right away. Pump the stomach. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. So it He's is- He's gonna poop out that kiss. Just yeah. don't let him kiss you later. <laughs> so it is, it is just amazing to me. Uh, and then, and then emergency clinics, they, they're bombarded right now. Interestingly, the emergency mm. clinics don't want you if it's not an emergency because there's yes. a five hour wait as it is. Yeah, so for, you go for on people the air and dogs, first, yeah. And you're talking well, to a, a real vet and, yeah. you, and, and you'll, you'll, have, you'll find out, you know what, this could wait till tomorrow and I could see my regular vet. Pet mm. owners would much rather see their regular, they don't want to go to emergency. They don't know the doctor. They, the, the charges are three times as the much. Of, yeah, the expense is horrible. Oh yeah. my God. So this way you find out, you know what, it's not an emergency. Here's what you can do. Try this. If it, you know, and when we start a case on AirVet, it's good for th uh, three days. So you can okay. actually go back on the app, go to open cases. It's not another fee. And, and, you can, and then you can pick my brain or, or your doctor's brain and uh, wait till see your vet on a, on a, on a, when they're open, when they're available. So what do you think of this? This is revolutionary. We, I, mean, and I think it's really good that your son, Brandon, did not want to become a veterinarian. Well, he is, he is such a whiz. I'm telling you what he's done to this company and his, I, I, you know, you know, like um, one of our, our board members is a guy named Bob Anton. Bob is one of the co, uh, he's created and founded VCA. And, um, and um, so Bob loves my son. So we were at a trade <laughs> show and, and we, we've taken Bob uh, to breakfast a couple of times when we were planning air vet and what he thought. And he, he I tell you, he's, he's a smart guy, not because of what he just said when I tell you what he said, but okay. the fact that he got it. 
And when he's looking at this, he's shaking his head, looking at what we're doing, how we're doing it, how we're different from our competition. And he goes like this. He goes, Jeff, this is not a home run. He goes, this is a grand slam. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's now definitely. on our board. And, but when he so – I saw him at a trade show. He's walking towards us. We're walking back to the, the, to the conference hall. He's coming to the Hyatt for, I guess, a meeting. And I put out my hand, and it's to say hi. And he pushes my hand away because I don't want to see you. And it gives Brandon a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what a great thing from a father's point that look at your son because the Werbers are keeping it going. You guys are trailblazers. You know, he is, you know, I got to say, he gets the credit. Um, you know, the, the brain child was mine. I knew exactly what veterinarians wanted. And I, I, nobody knows pet parents like I do. And so I knew exactly how, what, what we needed to do and have so they could love us. And, yeah. but I didn't know. Again, I'm not a tech guy. I went to vet school, so I didn't. I didn't know how to implement it, and and to have that tech business sense, which is exactly what he went to business school, and then and then he he was in tech, so he 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 gets it. He gets what's called the UI UX. I didn't even know what UI UX meant. I don't either. I still yeah. don't. No, it's it's like the user interface and user experience. Oh, how okay. do we get the users? And then I was going to use something that started with the word umbrella, but yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I'd be off. Okay. So, so, uh, and he under he understood that. And he understands what we need to do to make it happen, and he made wow. it happen. We so he's the one that hired our entire tech team, the programmers, the 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 engineers. Uh, we have sales team. We have we have marketing. We have the 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 professional services that are working with the veterinarians. I mean, we built a company. Yeah. Well, I mean, what is he blowing you away, Kathy? Yes. The guy's yeah. got a radio show. The guy's got an Emmy. The guy's been a veterinarian for many years. He knows celebrities. Oh, by the way, let me do some TV stuff. And um, oh, let's and create a food, whole new platform. I, my food, <laughs> my product line, and my food line. Don't oh, gosh, that. we got it. He doesn't sleep. You know, <laughs> I think this name right here needs to go to you. Right. Because, what, more, um, <laughs> what more can I do? Well, you know, they say if you want something done, give it to a busy person. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, th I think so. And, um, is there anything, if you could say a couple things to people, because we're going to keep going in the show, to help them with their cats? Because we know that cats don't come up to you and say like a dog, hey, I don't, I don't feel good. I'm well, kind of punkish. I, you know, I'll tell you what it is. You know, cats are, uh, are, are amazing at hiding their conditions until it's too late. Oh. And once it hits, it hits hard. So what I recommend, and, I, and I, you know, every cat should be seeing a veterinarian at least once a year. By the time they hit seven, they should, that visit should include, and this assume they're, they've been healthy from years one through seven, no problem. They may get a little panel, blood panel before a dentistry, before a dentistry, before they have to go under anesthesia. But mm -hmm. by the time, age of seven, they should get a full blood panel, including, Good. this is very important for cats, um, all the kidney tests, because we know kidney failure is one of the prime killer of older cats, and a thyroid test, but not just the T4, but something called the T4 by ED, which is equilibrium dialysis. Because if you have a cat that has an issue, a problem, and their regular thyroid could be normal because it's supposed to be high, but they're suffering from sick thyroid syndrome, which lowers the thyroid value. So okay. you look at a regular thyroid in a cat that has hyperthyroidism and you might read it normal, but the T4 by ED can't be fooled. And okay, I, I wrote that down because early, guess what? Pick up early cases of hyperthyroidism in cats. April 7th, pet safety cat Casey turns seven. Ah, so yes, you want to get That's that. That's his full, birthday present. Full, full physical with your analysis and some maybe x-rays. And, uh, and just what I tell people all the time, know your cat and don't attribute a change in behavior or appetite or anything just, oh, well, he's getting older. Mm -hmm. No, you need to check it out. You need to find out what's going on. And I only can tell you that, you know, having had uh, many cats over the years and have been burned by it as well, because you think something is fine. I had a cat that, that started coughing and not eating one day, one day. I brought him in that day and took x-rays. He was in heart failure and his lungs were full of fluid. Oh my gosh. Okay. Good, good advice. Up the wow. day before he was active and he, he, he was eating. So it's like, whoa. So you, know, you, you never know. So, and, and as I said, and we don't, because cats don't, well, I shouldn't say most or many cats don't bond with their owners as like a dog would. 
Mm -hmm. They're not going to jump on your lap while you're watching TV. I mean, mine do, but many don't. And so you don't, you don't know always what's going on. So that's why I it's guess, so um, I guess Rusty is not aloof, you say? <laughs> right, exactly. He knows it. And that's, <laughs> that's what you, so you need to have, when your cats are like that, then you can tell more. But uh, just, you know, watch them and, and annual exams. And when they get older, older, more than one. Think about, what are the, and, and let's talk obesity in cats. Obesity mm -hmm. in cats can lead to type 2 diabetes. And that's very dangerous. Kidney failure, a, a major killer. Cervical line lesions. If you have a cat that, that like wants to eat, but doesn't, like maybe oh, yeah. he's hesitant. He goes up to the food bowl, but he's not eating or, or he picks up the food and it drops out of his mouth. Or, or you see him going like that a lot. He might have... Oh, we got a Wi-Fi issue. Come back, Dr. Jeff. He'll come back. Well, let's start our brief profile while he's coming okay. back. With us. Well, I, we got to let him know, too, that uh, somebody, um, um, so, Teresa. You know, and of course, we talked about hypothyroidism. Okay. Your, your screen that? is frozen, uh, Dr. Jeff, right now, but now you're back. Oh, Good. Um, what back. we got to do, because we're watching the clock, we're going to right now take a segue. We're, we're going to do the breed profile with Kathy Black. It's okay. on the okay. Egyptian mouse. Stick around because I'm going to go off camera so I can get my goodies ready to make all of us for St. Patrick's Day, the Lucky Irish Manx Cat Tail Cocktail. So you go ahead and join uh, Kathy. Ah. She's going to take away with the Egyptian mouth. Take it away, Kathy. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a very unique breed called the Egyptian Mal. Uh, it's got a lot of mystery surrounding the origins of this breed, but Mal means sun or cat in ancient Egypt. And there are peppery and frescoes dating back to as far as 1550 BC that depict spotted cats. So the Egyptian male, they're saying, has been a, a spotted breed for a very long time in that region of the world. It is the only naturally spotted breed of domestic cat, and they come in three colors, silver, bronze, and smoke. Now, the one I showed at the very first is the smoke pattern, and it's probably the least recognized and probably the least known of this breed. The silver is the most popular. So let's look at the different colors. Now these are uh, random spotting on the cats. We have the bronze at the top left, the silver on the top right, and the smoke in the middle. These cats do have green eyes. We mentioned them as being one of the breeds, but they have an eye color that's called gooseberry green. They're said to have a worried expression about their eyes. And they have a, uh, their body is not a ballerina dancer like you would think with the Orientals or the Siamese, but they're not as muscular as like an Aussie cat or a Bengal. They're an in-between style of body. They're very graceful. They have um, a, uh, they throw this back to the old um, wildcats. They have a belly flap, a flap of loose skin that runs from their belly to their hind leg. This is a, um, two different cats in the smoke pattern. And these are two in the bronze. The bronze is probably the uh, second least recognized color in these cats. And then the silvers are by far the most popular. I grabbed a picture of gooseberries off of Dr. Google, as Dr. Jeff calls it. <laughs> and uh, this was, these are gooseberries. And so uh, you can see there's a lighter green, there's a darker green. And you see that in this female and this male of the Egyptian males. These cats are very highly intelligent. They are, uh, what, Teresa, how would you describe the personality? But they they are, yes, they are incredibly intelligent. And because they are a natural, well, I'll uh, say because they're a natural breed, but they, they are very attuned with their owners. They bond very, very much with their owners. And Kathy mentioned the worried expression on the Egyptian mouths. Take a look at these two cats. And what, one of the things that gives them that expression, look at their nose, it's a straight line from the inner eyes all the way down to the nose letters. Most cats, it'll kind of come out just a little bit. Thanks, Phoebe. 
will come out just a little bit, but the Egyptian mouth straight down. I think it's in that worried expression. Okay. Nice. What did you think of the Egyptian mouth? You got something to add, Dr. Jeff? Yeah, I just had a question for Kathy. So, you yeah. know, as I said, I, we talked before the show that I, um, one of the breeds that I just love, and I've had one before, was a Bengal. Um, but they're spotted. In fact, that you, more Bengals are spotted than mine. Mine was a, was a, was, you know, sort of not the spotted type. Yeah. So, so you had the marble. Do, where do yeah. the spots come from? So, so the, the spotted pattern is a broken tabby pattern. And so tab, all cats have the tabby gene behind them. You bring up the bingos, the bingos were uh, outcrossed to the Asian leopard cat, which is a wild blood of cat. That's how it started originally. And they do come in the, the marble pattern as well as the, the marble, right. and, and the, and the, also the uh, rosettes, which is a two-tone big circle. Like a leopard. Yes. Yeah. yeah, those are gorgeous. So, yeah. So, so when we say these are the only naturally occurring domestic breed of cat, we're talking about they don't have any of the wild, wild influence. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. yeah. And our other breeds that are spotted have been made by crossing them to other breeds, like the the um, the yeah, spots on yeah. the Aussie cats or the or the spots on yeah. So that's why the, these these just come in that one pattern, which is the spotted pattern. Right, got it. And I, and Teresa might can, uh, correct me, but I was thinking about this. I don't think we recognize any other breed in the smoke and the spotted pattern because the smoke gene causes the white undercoat and the outer coat to have the color. And so most cats that have the smoke gene are not also patterned. They're solid. Um, yeah. uh, so I was trying to think if we had another breed that was in a pattern. You can have smoke, you can have smoke chatties in the Persians. But not usually spots, right? Well, certainly not in Persians. I don't know. Yeah, well, but not not. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the tail just keeps going this way from Phoebe. Oh, Phoebe. It, Maybe you're going to meet Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff, meet Phoebe. We already met hey. Destiny. You met Casey and Rusty. What do you think of this beauty? Phoebe is a beauty. Yeah. He's a yeah. Russian guys, blue. Um, a Russian blue, gonna, yep. We got a couple things to finish up and then we're going to have our big kitty cocktail. So we're going to get excited about that. Yeah, um, okay. Dr. Jeff, I am not a veterinarian, but I sure love teaching pet first aid in our oh, veterinary yes. approval. Oh, classes. yes. And how um, necessary it is. Yeah. And I tell people that pet first aid is that life saving bridge between the uh oh and the veterinary clinic. Mm -hmm. right. And we teach them to call on their speaker phones in route so you know that they're coming, right? Because veterinarians don't like surprises with Correct. CPR, chest compressions and all that, right? Right. So look Absolutely. at my two assistants. What do you think of them with their, uh, for, I teach a cat only first aid class, a as dog and know, cat and you, an instructor class. As you know how much I love the orange tabbies. Uh, beautiful. You, yeah. And males, big. Uh, everything about them I like. Well, we try to help people understand that they get the permission to freak out later and to be in the me now when they're rendering aid to a kitty. So we show them some ways to wrangle cats safely. But um, I, um, we, our last class, we had people from Germany and Egypt. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So Casey and Rusty, I, I make them earn their kibble. <laughs> So we have we have openings, guys, for April 22nd. It's a cat first only class. Go to Pet First Day for you. We also have a dog and cat class Monday, April 12th or Saturday, April 24th. Just go to Pet First Day for you. You're going to see all the classes, but we incorporate COVID. We've got some clips from some veterinarians. I have to get with you, Dr. Jeff, because I think it'd be great in my class to have a little soundbite from an Emmy Award winning veterinarian. Okay. I can't let me know. In, except in gratitude. <laughs> and tell people about air vents. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> a deal. Okay, that's a deal. Deal, deal, that's deal. A deal. All right, guys. Um, I uh, I know this is bad puns, but um, I think we've reached the pint of no return. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's so bad. That's so that's, bad. That I got is the bad. Joke before we do our St. Patrick's Day drink, and it is this: um, What do ghosts drink on St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> Anybody? What do ghosts drink? Booze. 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 
<laughs> See, look what my degree from Purdue has given me, Dr. Jeff. Really. <laughs> That's pretty scary, right? Hey, guys, take a look. This is the Lucky Irish Manx Cattail. We want to say move over, Green Bear. That would have been too easy for me to do on today's show. Let's celebrate the Irish and Manx cats with this classy cocktail. And let's give it up for Teresa Kiger. Not only does she know cats, she designs these graphics cocktails every week. She creates the graphics for it, Dr. Jeff. What do you think? I think it's great. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I didn't have... I, I have my sour apple. I, I, okay. I have that. All right. Well, this is sort of simmer. So yeah. here's how we make this cocktail. And as I told Dr. Jeff was surprised when he found out I was a bartender. <laughs> I know. It's great. <laughs> all right. We have hidden talents, all of us. This one's pretty easy. You just take a, a, a cocktail shaker glass, fill it with some ice, and you're going to put in uh, one shot of sour apple schnapps. Ew. You're going to then do uh, two ounces of your favorite Irish whiskey. Come on, guys. It's St. Patrick's Day. This one is a, uh -huh. a good one. Nice. Yep. And for uh, two ounces for you guys with the Posse Pours, that's an eight count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I usually count and, more slowly. Yeah, I know. That's what, <laughs> that's what oh I always gosh. tell her. You guys got to go together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you want uh, two ounces of white cranberry juice. And we're almost done. You give it um, a nice uh, shake. And you gotta make that shaker freeze, man. That's how it tastes good. You should have a chilled glass ready to go. Um, and this one, I'm going to strain this but it is St. Patrick's Day, so as I strain it, Easter's right around the corner, guys, so this shouldn't be hard to find. Add a few drops of food coloring. Green, please. Take your little cocktail stirrer. Isn't it looking nice? That's it's almost as pretty as yours, Dr. Jeff. That's pretty. And then we finish so well. it up because it is St. Patrick's Day with a couple of apple, green apples. So at this time, let us all raise a glass and let us toast to all cats, purebreds and mutt cats who make us better humans and happy St. Patrick's Day to all. Cheers. 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 Oh, I is like that this one. This has gotta be a winner. It's got the refreshing of the cranberry, huh. but it's got the whiskey for a little adult kick, and the sour apple isn't overpowering. What do you think of this uh, look here, Dr. Jeff? That looks great. I'm going to have to try it. Are you drinking a green apple martini, Dr. Jeff? I am. I am. Show it to us. Show it to your. Show us your. So I, I love. Think that's I pretty love, cool. My, my wife teases me all the time. I'm drinking a girly drink, but you know what? I love them. That's and, all right. Uh, an, ap an apple teeny. And, and we love Dr. Jeff for being our special guest. You really are making a difference. And, I, and I'm not sucking up, man. I'm an ex-newspaper reporter that did investigations. For me to even sound gushy, that means a lot. Does well, that, thank you. And I love doing it. And if I can do anything I can to help pets, that's why I'm here. I said, that's my, my focus. That's my, I was at my mission. I said it was, it was a calling. And I think I picked the right profession. Not, oh. not I think. I yeah. know I picked the right <laughs> And guys, at this time also, let us thank the Cat Fancier Association. They bring us Meowie Hour each and every Wednesday after this show. It's going to be on YouTube, thanks to um, my co-pilot, Kathy Black. I also want to give a shout out to my other co-pilot, Teresa Kiger, and to Casey and Rusty, who are probably kissing a Blarney Stone right now in my office. Um, again, let's give a big shout out to our sponsors. We're talking Zymox and Oratine and in clover and guys if you don't want to brush your cat's teeth do what i do i just put a little oratine in their water bowl every day that's cleaned out every day okay so we have solutions to do to keep our pets well and i know that they'll be running if i bring out the in clover treats so we're going to do that after the show next week our special guest sunglass cat and her human karen 
McGill. Now, this is a cat with special needs, and I'm sure you get those cats, Dr. Yes. Jeff. So we're going to do a, a shout out for kitties with special needs next week on the Owie Hour. We got about 30 seconds left. Anybody want to say anything besides happy St. Patrick's Day? Uh, just real quick, brushing teeth. Start your kittens when they're young and don't go at them from the front, come from behind. And, okay. And, and then they, you start rubbing your, with, your, with your finger. No toothpaste, no brush, just your finger at first. And just rub it and then feed them. Always make it fun. Each time make a little bit, 10 seconds longer, 20 seconds longer, until you get to the point where they, they accept it. They know that it's coming their food. <laughs> and then, then, you, then you put the paste on slowly. And then you put a little finger brush on. And you can get your cats to accept having their teeth brushed. And as much as I love Ortine, and I do, you can use them in conjunction with each other, but nothing replaces good brushing of the pet's teeth. All right. With that, guys, we want to say um, we will see you next week on the Yowie Hour. Same cat channel, same cat time. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Woo! Thank you, Dr. Jeff.